All right, so then for the people who are new, let me just give you a little setup for success, and that is if something that I say or share doesn't make sense, this is a nice informal environment so you can ask. I love questions. And just keep an open mind, because I, the information and the energy, hi, welcome, hi. that I bring forward is definitely very progressive. It's mm -hmm. definitely not in the mainstream, and it will likely at some point push your buttons somehow or some way, but I don't mean that in a detrimental way, it's just that we're all here right now on planet Earth. Whether you realize it or not, we're just massively expanding our consciousness, and that means old ways of thinking, believing, feeling, behaving are gonna get pushed somehow, some way, to make us expand. And if I'm the button pusher for you, it's not ever meant with any kind of harmful or malevolent intent. It's always just my style of delivery that does that. So, okay, so with that said, also though for the new people, if you don't know, my name is Lori Spagna, and I'm an ascension guide in a channel, a multi-dimensional channel. I definitely have an amazing connection with the non-physical world. That just astounds me. Um, that includes benevolent um, angels, archangels, ascended masters, and star beings mm -hmm. who are from other dimensional realities that we now have access to. Mm -hmm. And so we can connect with them. And as we develop our gifts in doing this and strengthen our capacity for it, uh, we, it's available to all of us. It's just that I'm really, really, really wonderfully connected to these, these non-physical beings who are here to help us. So um, that's a huge part of what I do. I also, a huge part of what I do is work with the animal kingdom and the consciousness of animals mm -hmm. um, to facilitate their part of the contribution to the awakening of humanity and just a ton of other things. I mean, I'm intuitively guided and then we do just massive amounts of healing based on requests and what's coming through. So <coughs> stick with it. Even if you feel like you don't understand something, you can ask and... That's kind of what I do. You'll get to know it as we go through the evening. Sound good? Mm -hmm. And so here's kind of the layout. Um, it's about three hours, but we take two breaks in there. So the first hour, I usually do some kind of content delivery, like to share with you about what's going on. But since we have a smaller group, I might just go straight into kind of opening it up for your questions, and we can just let ourselves be guided in that way. And then the second part, or third part, depending on how it flows, is we do energy healing for the group. And it's based on your requests. The thing is to understand with the energy healing, it's a meditation, but it's not like a peace, it's not like a peaceful, it is peaceful, <laughs> but it's really an active engagement because the meditation is really about coming into more consciousness while you're embodied, while we're all in our physical form. Mm -hmm. And it's, again, it's kind of based on your request. So that's the second part of the evening. And then we'll kind of close afterwards with, um, just probably final closing Q&A comments. Make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. So and we'll have some breaks in there, but it's about three hours. So, all right, so let me, let me ask you guys some questions. Tell me who, especially for the new people, because I know if you know me already, you know this stuff, but who knows and understands this concept of ascension? Yeah? Is, this, if, does, is there anyone in the room who doesn't understand that basic concept, ascension? Okay. All right, that's all right. And is there anyone who doesn't understand this concept of um, third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension? No, okay, so let's start there, yeah? So right now on planet Earth, we have a huge event happening. It's not an event. It is affecting all of humanity, whether people know it or not. And this, this is a, 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 a kind of like a happening in sort of waves. That's why a lot of people have no idea that it's going on. And this process is called, uh, many of us refer to it as ascension. Mm -hmm. You could also refer to it as the shift or the shift of consciousness mm -hmm. or the awakening. <clears throat> but what it is is all of humanity is being given an opportunity to awaken out of what we call our unconsciousness. And the unconsciousness is what we call the third dimensional paradigm. That third dimensional paradigm is based on unconsciousness, but it's based on us existing in our everyday reality, thinking, feeling, basically uh, separate, separate from one another, separate from source. Even if we're very spiritual, we typically 
believe or perceive that that source is external to us, something we pray to outside of us, or some Santa Claus in the sky, or we go to some organized religion to get connected to it, some preacher or monk or whatever, um, or we have to go to the mountaintop. This is all separation. In this third dimensional paradigm that we've been living in, the general, the general rule of existence without us even realizing is fear. Mm -hmm. So fear of getting sick, fear of dying, fear of tax man taking your money away, fear mm -hmm. of something going wrong, fear of some kind of problem. And within that, we have just general energies of anxiety, worry, doubt, major overriding energies of victimhood. So what is a victimhood? The victimhood is somebody did something wrong to me and it's not my fault. I'm going to blame someone else because it's easy to do that. And we don't realize we do that. And there's no wrongness here because that's the third dimensional paradigm that we've been living in. So even... If you look at a good example, recent Me Too you movement that's been going on for the last year, mm -hmm. that's really about coming out of victimhood, but it's still victimhood. Mm -hmm. Someone did something to me and they're the bad guy. It's blame. It's not really, we are coming out of victimhood in this example, but there's still somewhere in there a wrongness, a judgment, something external is has done something to me, I'm the victim, and I'm not making any of this wrong. I'm just trying to demonstrate what this third dimensional paradigm is. Mm -hmm. Also in this third dimensional paradigm, we need external forces to actually make us better. For example, doctors have to make us better. We go to the doctor to find out what's wrong. We have no idea. We've given away our power, essentially, mm -hmm. to heal and fix ourselves, or fix is even the wrong word, but you know, work with me here. It's more like we, we, we lost connection with the own intelligence of our bodies and we trust this person who themselves most likely is overworked, overstressed. <laughs> they themselves are pushed to their own limits and we're giving our power away. That's an example of the third dimensional paradigm. Another example is we have to go to a, a lawyer to somehow help us because, you know, we've, we can't get along with someone or someone's done us wrong, we're a victim so we have to go to a court or we need someone to overrule us and tell us right from wrong, that kind of example. That's, all of that's what goes on in third dimensional reality. In third dimensional reality when you're a child, hello, come on in. You have to go to a teacher who tells you if you're smart or stupid. I'm exaggerating to make the point, but we understand that's third dimensional reality. Make sense? So ascension is the process that everyone on humanity has the opportunity to go through. All, we call it all willing hearts because it is a free will choice. You have to choose it. And to wake up out of this reality and start realizing our connectedness with one another, with everything, with everyone, and especially, above all, with our divine source. And to start recognizing that that source is within us. It's, not, it's external to us in the sense that it's all that is but it's wholly and completely within us. Mm -hmm. So we become, we're awakening to this higher consciousness, coming into more alignment with this inner knowing, this new expanded consciousness where we actually stop believing and perceiving. Here's the big, the big thing about it. Believing and perceiving that the external world has power over us. And this is not just people, places, things, experiences. This is actually even time is not external to us. This is actually even the aging process is not external to us, not based on time. This is actually even um, allergies is a good example, all illness. Nothing is external to us, nor are we a victim of it. Actually, we have within us all the solutions. This includes global events. So instead of over here in 3D, people kind of walk around. A lot of people you'll notice will walk around saying, oh, what are you going to do? Nothing you can do. You guys familiar with that kind of energy? Yeah? Mm -hmm. But now we're shifting into, no, I have the power to make a change within me. And that's going to reflect and ripple out. And I actually have even greater capacity to affect the whole of humanity as I come into alignment with this source that's within me. Yeah? So this is, the, this is what we mean when we talk about ascension. It's the awakening from this slumber to the coming into alignment with some, some, some greater capacity that's so 
far beyond anything we have actually known or perceived up until this time. Does this make sense? Yes. Is this helpful yes. to those people? Okay, so this old reality is what we call a third dimensional paradigm, this new reality that we're waking into, waking up into, or coming into alignment with is really a, a fifth dimensional reality. The fifth dimensional reality, over here it's controlled by fear. What's it controlled by over here in fifth dimension? Love. Love and peace and basically compassion, understanding, unity, the recognition that we're united, we're connected, and ultimately oneness. Because oneness is where we realize we are at one with all that is. We're, all at, we're at one with all that is. There's nothing really external to us. The external reality becomes a reflection, as it always has been, a reflection of what's internal. Does this make sense? Yes. Yeah? So the challenge from getting to, from here to here is what, this is, the, this is the big challenge, from elevating out of this dense, heavy, fear-based reality, victim-based consciousness, to this very light, peaceful benevolence, it's not, just, it's not just like you're turning on a switch suddenly. It's not that simple because what's been happening is that this, this reality has existed for the last approximately 26,000 years. And so we have existed in this reality for 26,000 years. Mm -hmm. And we've been basically programmed. Programmed is one word to use. Mm -hmm. mind, mind, melt, uh, mind control is another word. Yeah. Um, Conditioned. Conditioned, thank you, is another word. We've become vibrationally compatible with this kind of reality. And so, I mean, let's just use a good example is, you know, just say you're, you're, you're just stressed and your body's like this and you're just, you know, upset or angry or frustrated and you just, you're, your brain's going, your emotions going, the body's responding. Now, how do you get yourself out of that over and over and over again until that's no longer dominant? It's just constantly reprogramming, re rewiring, realigning with these new frequencies. Mm -hmm. This is not an overnight process. And so over here, by the way, we've been conditioned and, yes, brainwashed to think that the solution is a pill. And we want it fast. We want it fast, we want it quick, we want it overnight. And if it doesn't work that way, then it doesn't work at all. And the thing is that will trap us in here because it, this is not a pill. I've been doing this work now myself, consciously and deliberately for, you know, 20 years. And professionally for over 10 years. And I'm still doing my own inner work. So understand that most of this is very unconscious to us and we don't catch ourselves when we're in the unconscious state dealing with this. We just don't, catching ourselves and getting conscious is this, sometimes we even get into a looping pattern of overanalyzing and trying to figure it all out and then we're trapped in the same dynamic of what I call a looping pattern. Um, so it's, it's really challenging to us and whenever we um, go through this, these kinds of processes, we tend to get sort of locked into our own kind of box until something can sort of help us to move energy or shift consciousness, yeah? Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. By the way, we have accelerated periods when this happens on Earth. For example, a very recent one, if you, if you just noticed the first month of January, anyone notice any really intense stuff go on? Yeah. So what we had on planet Earth in January was what we call a core magnetic shift. Mm -hmm. And I can explain this a little better, but it's also very easily recognizable by we had an eclipse. So January 6th was a, um, an eclipse opening for January, and then we had January 21st, 22nd was an eclipse closing. In that window, what happens during these eclipses is it pushes everything up. So if you went through something like really intense, that's pushing stuff up. What do I mean by pushing it up? It's bringing up the density that's been so heavy here, that's trapped, that maybe before we could tolerate, or we could sweep under the carpet, or we could ignore, or we could repress, or deny, or maybe some of us were pretending, or maybe we were just unconscious of it. But when it pushes it up like that, you can't deny it anymore. It's that old stuff that's resonating there 
that has to come up to the surface so that we can elevate into this new frequency. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so the point of this, yes, and let me give you one more moment. The point of this evening, though, is to help us to do that. That's why I do these evenings, to help people navigate through this. And we, it's where we can bring up these things. You're smiling. I want to hear why you're smiling, too. We can bring up these things and work on them and clear them here because what you find is in healing circles where we have benevolence come in and they help offer us guidance. And we're also always working with the clearest access to divine source, the original source of creation, uh, that's fully conscious of all of us as individualized beings, as itself, it's us. Mm -hmm. That source is calling forward itself, birthing through us. So when we come into circles like this, this is a really great way and place to work on it safely, comfortably, in an environment that we're supported and where we're all really loved. We're all here with a unique divine decision and choice to, to do our own. We can use the word healing, but it's really just coming into resonance with a new reality. Make sense? Yes. Okay, what were you going to... Third dimension, fifth dimension, what happened to fourth? Yeah. <laughs> so fourth dimension is a non-physical reality. In third dimensional reality, what are the three... I know you know this because you've probably heard me a million times. What are the three dimensions? What are the first three dimensions? Come on. Space. Okay, space, yes, time is not a dimension. I know people think that. I just thought a whole course on time. So space, and space is height, width, and depth, yeah? yeah. So there's a space between you and, and time is an aspect of space. Because the space between today and tomorrow is a space, right? Mm -hmm. This week and next week, that's a space. So in that sense, time fits into space, but it's not a dimension of its own. The rocks and the minerals is one? Well, that's not a dimension. That's rocks and minerals fit into space. Why? Because a rock has depth, width, and height. Yeah? Space. So that's a dimension of its own. Space. Another dimension in the first three dimensions is, do we see light? And color, right? So light is just a vibration of light. And depending on its frequency, it's got color. Yeah? That's a dimension. And then sound. Sound. Yes. You can hear sounds. You can hear music and tones. That's part of our reality. Now in third dimensional reality, you can stay with me because I'm still working on hers. Oh. But keep that. I'll come back to you. In third dimensional reality, you know if you can't see it, touch it, taste it, feel it, it's not real, right? It's woo-woo. <laughs> it's out there. It's not real. That's people who are in 3D, that's what they believe. You know, angels, yeah, okay, I believe, but, or maybe I don't believe, whatever. So fourth dimensional reality is where we start connecting with the non-physical realm. Mm -hmm. We have to move beyond thinking that this is all there is in order for us to get to 5D, because we absolutely must connect with the non-physical realm to elevate ourselves here. Not only must we connect with it, we must somehow integrate it. We must somehow embody more of this non-physical aspect of ourself because otherwise we're just limited here to only physical things. Mm -hmm. Can we make sense of that? Does that make sense? So what's the difference between four and five? Yeah. So fifth dimension is where you've embodied the non-physical, you've integrated all of this non-physical aspect for the most part, and you're able to anchor into a new reality based on all new frequencies. Mm -hmm. So here is a fear-based, I use it for here to here just for explanation. But here's a fourth based frequent, a third dimensional fear based frequency. Here's a fifth dimensional loved based frequency. The process of moving from here to here energetically, in terms of consciousness, that means you must look at all those fears, all that anxiety, all that worry, all that separation, all the energies of judgments, opinions, beliefs that are not true. I'm better, you're worse, I'm smarter, you're less than, less than, greater than, hate Trump, love Trump, judgment, right, wrong, good, bad, all that stuff, including are, are dead people real? Are ghosts real? What's real, what's not real? I can see colors, I can see lights beyond, you know, it's just, oh, am I psychic, am I hearing things? You know, all that is in this non-physical realm of what we call fourth dimension. And as we integrate it, what we're doing is we're dropping, we're dropping all these heavier frequencies. We're dropping them. We're letting them go. We're like, that's too dense for me. I'm going to elevate. 
And this is, we have to consciously do this over and over again. It's not a, again, not a switch. And as we do that, we're traversing this fourth dimensional realm. And then we start anchoring into 5D because we realize we've cleared off all that density. And now we're really vibrating energetically more harmoniously with love. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And peace and joy and forgiveness and happiness and optimism and things that just aren't really readily available here for the whole. The other thing is, it's not that it's not available, it's just you have to traverse this to, have to really embody it. Understand that fifth dimension is also just another anchor point because there's way more beyond 5D. But you really can't access anything beyond 5D until you're well anchored here for the most part. Make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. One other thing about 4D that's a really great way to explain it is it's like Grand Central Station. You know, you're just kind of like moving through it. You don't hang out there. Or an airport. You're moving through it. It's not somewhere you live. But you understand in order to get to where you're going. Um, there's something else I was going to say. Oh, understand here, this is where gifts start to open up. Everyone's gifts as healers start to you can start to access more of your gifts as a healer, an intuitive, animal communicator, energy worker, angel guide. These are where the gifts open up because, of course, all of those gifts are only available to us as we open up to this non-physical realm. Make sense? Yes. Okay. You had something, Jeffrey. It was just um, when you were talking dimensions about sound and light. Okay, my mind always come up with frequencies. Yes. So, our dimension, well, for me, I use frequencies more than dimensions. That's the same thing, basically. Well, no, it's not the same thing, because there's frequencies in everything. So, the frequency in third dimension is dense. It's, we can also refer to it as third density, because it's very heavy. Mm. Heavy and slow. So, what's, for example, the frequency of anger? It doesn't mean you won't feel anger over here, by the way. I know. It just means... That's not where you're going to resonate. But just for purposes of our understanding frequencies related to your question, there's a frequency of anger. It feels and moves kind of like this. It's stuck. It's... Right? That's a frequency. Yeah. Whereas over here, there's a frequency of peace, and it feels more like this. Something like that, right? They're both frequencies. So this is a third density. We could call this a fifth density because it's lighter. And the frequency is running through this dense. That's why if you're standing next to somebody, for example, and you, as you're awakening up, you start to become more and more sensitive. And as you're coming into this new sensitivity, you could stand next to someone. You could feel their stress or their tension or their anxiety. You would kind of know it's not yours personally. You're still living in separation. There's a person, there's a person. You know your natural frequency as you resonate more here is this, and yet you're standing next to someone who's got this. They're talking faster. You know, they talk faster. They, they gotta get here, they gotta get there, they gotta check your email. You can see that's all frequency. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. But, all right. So. Well, that, I was just, that, using frequency, but even light and sound are just frequencies too. That's correct. Everything is frequency. Right. Everything is an energetic vibration. The frequency at which the vibration moves, that's frequency. This, you could say frequency is relative to speed, in a sense, because the speed here is very dense and stuck and heavy, whereas the speed here is very flowing and sort of much more effervescent, if that's a good word. Make sense? No. They're both frequencies. I got, I got They're different about. speeds of energy. Make sense? Okay. Are you born into the fifth dimension? Children these days are. Mm -hmm. Most children, particularly if they're born to very, what we would call high vibe parents, mm. like hippie parents or yoga parents or <laughs> foodies. <clears throat> or light workers, healers, way showers. Not necessarily because they could be born into a much more unconscious family, and in that case, they probably have their own kind of work to do. But typically speaking, children now are being born with much more of their what we call octaves, mm -hmm. octaves, more, much more lighter frequencies. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Someone was gonna. 
Yeah. Uh, can you be like partially 5D? Yeah. Because understand, we're all we're all leveling up, and so wherever we have something maybe that we're unconscious of, or we still haven't resolved, or we're still working through, or we're still kind of unraveling or making sense of, or we haven't fully come into peace and acceptance with something where maybe we're still in judgment with or struggles we're having, whether they're relationships or financial challenges or health challenges or whatever they may be, that's going to be, if it's a challenge or a struggle, it's somehow linked into third dimension. Because over here, it's really not about struggle. No. It's not about challenge. It's about like, oh my God, this is so awesome. Now what am I going to create? Now that I have my power back. Now that I have my consciousness, what am I going to, who do, how do I want to be, who do I want to be, what do I want to do, experience, have, share, make Can sense? you still have your powers, and, like gifts, and know your gifts, but still be in 3D? Yes, you can. However, if you're, the more anchored you are in 3D, some people might disagree with me, but I, I feel very, very confident in saying this. The more anchored you are in 3D, the less power power you have. And when I talk about power in this say, way, what I mean is power to of the of divine source. Alignment with source. Because that kind of power is not about power over another. It's about power of contribution, power of service, the gifts of the divine. Power of love, of peace, of happiness, of joy. That's real power. Power of consciousness. Knowing Yes? Makes yeah. sense? Yeah. For example, there's a person who is channeling, let's say, but they themselves are really judgmental and not, like, they tend to be more connected or whatever, but as uh, human beings, they're really bad person, like, bad, bad people, yeah. but they're channeling. So where are they? Because I, I, I know that example, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody's different, and everybody has different kinds of sacred contracts and agreements and what they're here to deliver and what they're here to work through. So I can't necessarily speak to, like, every person since I don't know particularly who you're talking about, and it's not my place to say about a particular person. But what I can say is that in my, again, I will say this, I'm going to use the word belief to try to be flexible, but it's my knowing that you can only access a frequency that you're compatible with. Mm. So if you're playing in the realms of, you know, sh of the shadows, you're going to be limited in what your capacity is. And I, I, I will share just personally because I've had so, myself, so many of my own personal challenges and I can see how those challenges, as I worked through them, and came into more love and acceptance and peace, which is not an easy game to play. Hmm. No. That really opened up my gifts more and more and more. It also has made me more vulnerable in some ways because it's, you know, as a light worker, we're light workers here. We're coming into alignment with love, peace, forgiveness, and it's very confusing a lot of times, especially, uh, depends on your journey, what you're here to learn. Part of my journey was about discernment, real discernment and really being a truther too. So for me, I come into people and I just didn't always have that discernment. I had to develop it. It's very easy to get lost on the journey. We all have our different processes of what we're here to uncover and discover within ourselves. Does that help? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let me ask you guys, some of you guys, what are you, first of all, does, does anyone have any questions on what I've shared so far? Yeah, makes sense to everybody, everybody with me? Yeah. Could I ask you in the black shirt, were you the woman who I saw in the expo? I'm so glad you're here tonight. I was thinking about you all week and really hoping you would be here because I felt like I had so much more. I'm so glad you're here. And I was so um, humbled by your sincere sharing and vulnerability. I'm glad you're here. So thank you for being here. Okay, so okay, let me ask you guys, what are some of the things you're challenged by or struggling with? in terms of your awakening process. And I, I have some I do I'm gonna share with you. I probably could go right there right now, but I wanted to open the floor for people to ask some of the things that are coming up for you guys. Um, like I'm challenged by other people's 
um, opinions about things. Like I may feel like I want to come to this event, and the person's like, oh, don't bother. You know what I mean? So there's that <laughs> constant. <laughs> Like, I'm like working on one direction, and it's like, ah, don't do this, which is obviously control. Or an opinion about, I think when somebody opens the book on Facebook, like for housing, I suggest oh, sure. seniors or we'll artists, and all of a sudden people are like, no, it should be for law people or nurses. Or, and that was interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and I got kind of sucked in with, mm -hmm. like you said, 3D. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I, I kind of like, Okay, I could see that kind of like people getting angry over an issue. Yes. And okay, so let me say three things about this. First, understand that what we have in 3D is all kinds of hooks, right. cords, attachments, entanglements, and snarlments that will pull and suck us back oh, in. Yeah. And part of awakening out of this reality is really becoming more sovereign and liberating ourselves. And that is, that's a challenge. Right. So... It's a natural part of the, the awakening process. But that said, one of the things I absolutely know is true is in order to be really happy on planet Earth, the fewer opinions that we're rigidly attached to, the happier and more fulfilled we're going to be overall. That's a generality, it's not an absolute, but it helps. Now, how do we liberate ourselves? Because it doesn't mean you have to not have an opinion. Right. It means you have to have not be attached to your opinion mm -hmm. in the face of someone else's opinion. Right. You can still have all the opinions you want. Right. It's the attachment, right? right. So, so, one of the really wonderful things that helps, and this is what happens in the, in the healing meditation part, is we get unhooked from all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We come more into our own sacred neutral. Now, sacred neutral, eventually, the more we do it, it's known, we come into what's called the zero point. Because in a zero point, we're so neutral that actually those hooks can't even hook us in anymore. It's like, you know what? I'd rather be peaceful. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be happy. And we learn certain words and certain things like, you know, it's all good. Mm -hmm. We learn to say things like, you know, that's an interesting point of view. That's an interesting opinion. Oh, thank you for sharing your point of view. And we really mean it because we're no longer hooked into it. Right. Or even if somebody wants to do something, we learn that freedom is more important. Freedom for our happiness, our sovereignty, to be at our, our inner neutral, which is peaceful and benevolent. Right. We learn that it's okay if someone wants to do something else. You know what? Why don't you do that? It's okay. Right. I'll do this, you do that. Let's meet up later. And th that is a practice. It's not easy because we're going to get hooked in. And if there's, especially in relationships, if you're corded, mm -hmm. that cord's pulling on you. Your cord's pulling. Now you're in resistance reaction. This is why, to me, energy work is so important and vital because the truth is it's never re we're not really healing anything. I say I'm a healer, but it's not really the truth. What I'm doing is allowing for a new frequency to come in. Resolving in the state of neutrality, old frequencies and hooks and things that are more in here, mm. and bringing in this new frequency that helps you to elevate into it. Mm. And in the presence of that new frequency, that's where you start to vibrate with, those things can't. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. Is that helpful? Yeah, it's pretty much like Right. Let's go for coffee. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, well, well, it's also, I mean, like, I'll give you an example, too. Like, I've had that challenge and struggle with very um, dominating personalities in my own family life. And there were times where I literally had to say out loud, you know, it's, I'd rather be happy. I'd rather be peaceful. And, of course, we know this. We, it's one, this is a whole thing. Over here, you can know everything. You can be a Ph.D., you can be the most brilliant person on the planet, but if it's only up here, it's not, you're still going to be stuck here. Because what the, the shift from here, here it's all left brain. I know, I know, I know. The smartest person on the planet. Here it's heart centered. There is still left brain, there's right brain. There's a balance. But when you shift into the heart center, there's, there's just a, you know, 
I want you to be happy. I want you to enjoy your night tonight. And I want to enjoy my night too. So why don't you do what you want to do? I'll do what I want to do. It's all good. And that feels different because now the other person goes, all right, well, okay, now there's no tug of war hooky. But this can only come from the heart. This is not a left brain thing where you go, okay, you do what you want because that's a different frequency. Make sense? Again, I want to say that right now we're having conversations so we can kind of all come into a kind of an equal playing field here in terms of what we're working on tonight. But the truth is when we do the healing meditation part, that's going to help you so much more. So make sure you bring it up again. Ask, just, all you have to do is ask and then what, what I'm doing when we get to the healing part is more like just listening to source or whomever is showing up, got the guides that we have, the benevolence, and just what is it that's meant to be done here that serves everyone. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I'm taking, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm taking a lot of this as giving up control. Because a lot of times when you're mad or upset, it's because somebody's doing something you don't want them to do, or they're not doing something you want them to do, or yourself. So, I mean, basically, what well, I'm hearing is it's give giving up, up the struggle because control, trying to have control, is a struggle. Yeah. It's a power play, and that's, that can only happen here. Actually, over here, you have way more control, but it's a different kind of control. The kind of control you have here is inner power. The, the control over your experience. You're choosing an experience that is way more peaceful, enjoyable, and benevolent. More aligned with things that you actually consciously want. See, over here, the power struggle is just an unconscious program. I want, I want, I want, I need, I need, I need, you, me, us, this. I'm in a struggle. It doesn't actually feel good. Right. So we're unkind. We don't mean to do that. What is the struggle? I want pink ice cream. You want blue ice cream. I want to go for coffee. You want to go for beer. And if no one's happy here. Nobody's enjoying it. But, but the struggle is to have enjoyment, but yet nobody's enjoying it. We don't realize that's just not a solution to get us where we want to go. And that's not control? These are control issues. Yeah, that's what I thought. Control yes, issues. but understand you're not giving up control in the same way. You are. You are. You're not wrong about what you're saying. Uh, let me just uh, correct myself here. Hold on. From your perspective, that's absolutely true. But it's not the only scenario. In, in your perspective and what you're referring to, you're 100% right. And there's more. The and part is actually, as you shift into this frequency, you're actually gaining control. But it's not about gaining control. It's about having the experience that you truly want. So you let go of control here. You say, OK, I let go. And what that does is that tends to up-level you, frequency, little by little, bit by bit. And as you up-level, you start to realize, ah, this is what I wanted all along. Now I know how to have this. Ah, now I actually have so much more power to have what I wanted all along. And it's never going to be to the detriment of someone else. And it's never going to be in a struggle. So now actually you have so much more power. Because you understand you could have what you want. You could have had it all along but not with the power struggle. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? OK, I realize. It's, I can hear it's not good enough. But that's not because of me. Me. No, I hear, I hear there's more. That's all. Okay. Not from you. I just, okay. I, I, get, I, I hear it all. Well, let me go to see. Is there anyone else new, or do I? What on. I like to do is I like to stay neutral. And, and I tell myself, I'm not going to take other people's issues personal. Yeah. And everybody's perfect in their process. Yes. And I'm not going to take it personal. I'm not going to take their issues personal. And I just stay from a neutral sense yes. of space. Yes. Yes. That is, is the absolutely, that is absolutely part of the process. And we, we know that's not the whole picture, but we know that's part of it. Now, even as you're delivering that information, I want to ask you, and the, the way you explained it, which you're, I completely agree with you, still sounds like left brain, right? Like, I'm just not going to get take anything personal. What if it, what if we shift up, you leveled that even just a teeny little bit to, you know, 
That's their thing. I'm not taking it personally. Can you slight variation there? This is just energetics because that's, that's a perfect example of moving through 4D because in a way it's like, okay, I'm making a new choice. I'm not going to take it personally. And that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then from there you can up level even more. I'm making a new choice. I'm not going to take it personally to each his own. Because now I'm in my heart center. See? And this is where we gain control in a sense because it's like, oh, I'm controlling my field, my experience. And what happens is as we do that, we're resonating somewhere else and that vibration and that frequency is now moving through us. Because if I keep doing this engagement, I want to go here, you want to go there, let's do this. No, this is this frequency. And if I'm untangling myself consciously, I've got to breathe through this. Let me not get entangled, let me not get hooked. Not going to take it personally. Breathing, relaxing. And the people around you, when you first start doing it, are like, she's doing her stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Judgments, opinions, right? And this is just unconscious stuff. But you're just, you're knowing. No, nope. this is where I want to be. Let them judge, let them opinion. You know what? It's all right. It's all good. Now I start resonating more here. It's a vibrational shift. Can you see? All right, is that helpful, I hope? All right, what else are we, let's, let, I wanna go here for you so that I don't have too much time. So, can you tell me your name? Eugenia. Oh. Eugenia. Okay, so, if I, I share just yeah. that, Eugenia, you had shared at the expo that you had um, been helping your father through a very challenging health crisis, right? And you felt really, like, depleted and exhausted. And what I wanna say about this is, in the, and that's a beautiful thing to be there for your father, of course. And we all, we, we really do need to be there for one another. You know, that's what we have, friends and family to help one another. The thing is, is what we do is we, especially in third dimensional reality, and even as we're shifting into 5D, this has happened to me, myself, so many times, we over... Um, extend ourselves to the point of depletion. Mm -hmm. And we get so depleted that we have those, what I call, hit the floor moments. You know those hit the floor moments? Where you're like on the floor and you have nothing left to give and you're just either praying or you're exhausted or you're drained, you're just tired, your emotional aspect is some form of depressed or sadness, whatever it is and your physical is just completely, you have no more energy. See, this, this kind of stuff, and it's, it's very different when someone so close to us is sick, you know, we have to show up for them. I'm mean, not that we have to, but we make that choice out of love. And, but the thing is, is that this, this kind of energy is, um, ultimately, it's showing us, it's teaching us how to navigate this new reality. Because a new reality is all based on energy exchange. It has always been energy exchange, but in this old third dimensional reality, without going too much into the conspiracy stuff, our energy was basically stolen from us. Let's use, let's use it for simplistic, we'll say it that way. We gave our energy and our life force to everything external to us. In this new way of functioning, we have to realize that the energy that we have will continually be renewed as we're connected with this source. Mm -hmm. And there are certain ways that are foolproof to renew our energy. And we can never allow ourselves, never is a strong word here, to get so depleted because we realize if we're depleted, we are useless. Not just to others who we love, but to ourselves. So. Part of navigating the new reality is constantly monitoring our own self reserves, our, our energy fields, our ability to have energy, which is life force, which is also joy, which is also happiness, which is also inspiration, which is also excitement, which is also anticipation, which is also hmm. optimism. Those are all forms of energy. Health, which is also abundance, whether it's gold, silver, money, time, energy, whatever it is. The, the only way we can have that is if we're continually replenishing and never 
letting the energy go too low. Does this make sense? Yes. So what that means is there are certain, this is where I was going with it, there are certain foolproof things you can always do. We're so lucky in Florida because we have the beach. I mean, a walk on the beach is always, I mean, it, you might not be a beach person, but if you live in Florida, <laughs> You know, I'm thinking you're a beach person. A walk on the beach is always going to do it. A walk in nature is mm -hmm. always going to help to replenish energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to go over the foolproof things, but before I do, because they're just the basics. Mm -hmm. Sleep, green juice, healthy food of earth. Not, a, I'm not, when I say a healthy food of earth, I am not talking about animal carcass. I'm talking about something that grows from Mother Earth, right? That's always going to replenish energy. Sleep, a nap, nature time, if you like yoga or stretching or tai chi, whatever your form of movement, dance, always. Being among friends who are uplifting to you, supportive, mm -hmm. but not draining. So this is where I want to go next. But those are the fail, the fail proof. And of course, like if you like a massage or cranial sacral, but you understand, the moment you have to be constantly, every one of us is responsible for our own energy. So the moment we start feeling a depletion, it's like, oh, I feel a depletion. This means I have to stop exerting. I have to replenish. So replenish is those things we just talked about, but it could be anything for you else that brings you joy. Meditation, for sure, if I didn't mention that, I'm talking. Energy, <laughs> any form of energy healing working with a healer or a practitioner who really is there to serve you where you're receiving. All of those are modalities. If it's church or singing or choir, whatever it is, where you're going to be nurtured and fed. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So for you, especially Eugenia, for as long as you can, as much as you can, everything you do now until you are restored to joy and happiness and feeling like your right self must be you first. I understand if your father's needing you. I'm not saying not to attend to that. I'm saying to the best of your abilities. This really goes for all of us. But especially when you're depleted. Everything you think, say, or do must be, how do I love myself right now? How do I feed and nurture myself and care for myself right now so that I can restore myself to my optimal state of well-being. And everything you do to the best of your ability must be that. Because this is, this is the basics of self-care and self-love, self-nurturing. Everything has to be about that right now because otherwise this reality will hook you back in, suck you back in, drain you, and it's going to. But as we're monitoring our energy field, that's where we say, oh, no, I need to I need to go do some self-care so I can continue to be aligned. Does this make sense? Yes, Is absolutely. that helpful? And actually, it's such an incredible process when we do that because the self-love and the self-care that we are engaging in through that, it's so radical. It's like something awakens in us that we didn't even know was there where we're like, oh my God, this is what it feels like to make sure my needs are met. This is what it feels like to be really taking care of myself. I'm feeling so good, so much better, so quickly. And you just have to be careful because it's a, it's a shaky time right there because you start feeling better and if you're a giver, which I get that you are, you're gonna immediately default to the giving again, depletion. Make sense? So I want to use some examples here because this is such an important, an important thing at this time for humanity. Um, I use a very simple example. Like fr my Friday afternoons are my day off. I never ever work on Friday afternoon. I, I block it off on my calendar. Really the whole day of Friday, I usually just take the whole day off. And I don't do anything that I know will not uplift me. I'm usually at the beach meditating nature walks, dog walks, whatever. Um, and I monitor my every moment on those Fridays especially, but all the time. And I'm careful about who I'll engage with, conversations on the phone, because I can feel the moment someone's pulling on me. 
that feels bad. Shit, this was supposed to be my day off. I'm feeling. And then I'll do what I can right away because I know that's my day for me. So if I'm feeling drained, I'll be like, you know, I have some, I just, I want to get in the water before it gets cold or I want to get my dog walk. I just say, you know, like I just need to, can we, can we do this later? That's an example because social, sometimes I'm doing my social time on Fridays, you know, and, that, and I can feel it on the phone. If I have a friend who starts pulling on, oh, I got an entity, can you clear it off? It's like, this is my day off, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, you have to monitor your own space. That's what I mean. But I'll give you a more two more dramatic examples on this. Because it, there's no question that every person is going to reach your points. You're going to reach your saturation point where you're on your knees at points. I mean, that's just, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm projecting that. But I think that's what's happening to humans because it pushes us to our limits so that we can elevate ourselves. So. Two really good examples I can give you. It was one, two years ago, my website crashed. I was working every day, slave, slave driver programming, every day. I'd wake up in the morning, I'd be like, fuck, I gotta go back to this, man. <laughs> Never ending, I was just like working, working, working. I was caught in a looping pattern of this programming of slave, slave driver. You just being your own slave driver. And I would cleared the stuff, like I was working to clear it for years. You don't realize how deeply ingrained it is into us, our patterns of behavior. And I will never forget, I did a, un, didn't realize, we don't always realize what we're asking for. I did a prayer to Ganesh. Who knows what Ganesh, Ganesh is? Yeah. Ganesh clears obstacles. Mm -hmm. And I was like, can you just clear away the obstacles so that I can start feeling more joyful about... And the very next, within 12 hours, my website crashed. Because it was the website was what was draining me. Because I was working with an old platform and an old website. It wasn't built on the new um, platforms that were. It was 12 years old, right? 3D. What's that? It was 3D. It was 3D. It, well, it was an expression of who I was and not who I am. So I really got it. And I knew it was like that prayer to Ganesh. But it had me on the floor. Because you understand, that's like so much work. Everything was gone. And I had to start anew. This happened on the day after Thanksgiving. So there was no new website guy. There was nothing. My, my website was down for six weeks. Like my business was down. It stopped me. But it, it was what I needed to get out of that shift because I was so in the grind, in the unhappiness. I was depleted. I was putting all my energy into my work. I wasn't self-caring. I wasn't self-nourishing. And it was time for an up level. So that was, that's a good example because the universe forced, in a way I did say the prayer, but the universe forced me to self-care and self-love. By the end of the six weeks, it was, it was like through Thanksgiving and Christmas time. By the new year, I had a new tech guy who I love so much. He's like, I swear he's my boy toy from another <laughs> lifetime, Greece or something. <laughs> Anyway, you know, like that just changed everything and we rebuilt it, it was like nothing. But I couldn't see that from there. And so my whole energetic frequency, the whole vibratory state of my existence had to change and that window of time allowed for it. But sometimes we don't want it to be forced to that extreme. If we're doing it regularly, it doesn't have to get that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. The same kind of thing happened again because I, I have a habit of taking on so much Doing, doing, doing. I can do it all. Um, the same kind of thing happened at the end of last summer. I led this retreat, which some of the people here were on. I led a retreat of 20 people, crystal, sacred crystal retreat, on my own. I didn't really get myself the support I needed. And by the last day, I was flat. I was wiped. I was wiped. And the last day, there was just a couple things that happened. I just couldn't. I did, wasn't replenishing my energy. I didn't have the support that I needed while I was there. I was so flat at the end of it. I had to take like two straight weeks, no interaction to replenish. And the, none of that would have even happened. It's just that I had gotten entangled with some stuff that I needed to clear. Now, if I had been smarter, self-monitoring, making sure I had the help that I need, that probably wouldn't have happened, right? But this is another example that ultimately up-leveled me, because after that I said, I'm done doing anything where I'm not getting supported. 
done. That's why this stopped for a while, for those of you who noticed. I needed to get, now I have an amazing assistant, Jessica, helps me. So, you know, we have to monitor. That's my point. We all have to be monitoring whatever we're doing because none of us are really immune to these energetics that are trying to up-level us, where it's all based more on ease, grace, and benevolence. Make sense? Mm -hmm. By the way, do you want the definition of grace? Yeah. It took me years to get this. Years I struggled with this. And I would get down, I get downloads from source on what things are. Grace is the absence of resistance. Grace is the absence of resistance. I like it. I like it. So we're, in this reality, struggling with things. Mm -hmm. Relationship challenges, work challenges, health challenges, challenges with the government, outer authorities, TSA, whatever. Name your challenge. And it's a struggle. And there's resistance. Challenges of personalities. But to, get, to go to your point where we let go, hello, come on in, and we give up the struggle, now the grace is there. There's no resistance anymore. No push-pull. It's just... It's surrender. It is, except for that surrender has such a connotation, like somehow you're giving... You're not giving up. You're letting go. Yes. You're relaxing. You're releasing. You're aligning and attuning to this grace, to the energy of grace. Make sense? Mm. Okay. Can you tell us what the definition is to serve them? Is to what? Serve. Serve? Mm -hmm. Oh my. So, okay, well first of all, whatever, I will give you a download on it. But my definition, as I understand it, I'm always asking for definitions from source. Give me source's perspective. Mm -hmm. Make my perspective sources. Because when you start doing that, you start getting out of the egoic identification with things. But serve is not about, the higher truth of serve is contribution. The higher truth of serve is, I'm here to contribute. I have an offering of what my gifts are that contribute to the greater good. Serve is not about subservience. In our reality, oftentimes serving becomes, I'm serving you, but I'm subservient to you. Or somehow I'm giving something to you that I don't necessarily even have to give. Because I haven't really gotten my alignment with source or my own greatest version of me where this service is coming from. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? Yes. Okay, but let's just have everybody. Do you want Creator's definition of service? Yes. Make your definition the same as Creator's. As a, you can ask for Creator's definition on anything. And as you do, when you do this, you start to realize that your consciousness is shifting to higher, lighter frequencies that are more fifth dimensional based and higher. Make sense? Yeah. But let's just give everybody. Now, so for this, whenever you get a down, this is called a download. Why is it a download? It's just a word I use. I'm not the only one who uses that. But it's what, if you imagine, which it's not like this, but if you imagine that source is somehow above us or somehow a higher frequency, which is not true because it's running in and through us and around us, but that it's downloading you with its perspective based on your request, yeah? Mm -hmm. So in order to get that download, of course, there's, there's on the sixth dimensional realm, there are universal laws that, that govern us. They are unbreakable laws. Mm -hmm. One of those laws is a law of free will, which is also known as the law of intent, consent, and authority. So if I'm going to create a consciousness and asking to give you guys a download, because you've requested it, you have to give your consent. If you don't give your consent, you don't need to. But I can't override that, because that law will stop you from getting it. So this is why it's very important to say yes, please, or yes, thank you. Yes, I want it. If you don't, you say, no, thank you. The law will stop it from going, get, from you getting it. Mm -hmm. This is why skeptics don't get stuff. Skeptics don't get it because their mind's like, I don't believe that. They've just blocked it. They've just basically said, nope, not, not letting it. Skeptics and other forms of that kind of stuff. Make sense? Mm -hmm. but let's have a download. So you want to breathe, okay? Now, in order to, you're tuning to a frequency. So just take a deep, long, slow, relaxing breath. And your mind's, after I just say the words, your mind's just going to say yes please or yes thank you. You can say, it's good to say it out loud because it kind of tunes it in, but just as long as you say it and make it clear that you want it. And we'll just have creator of all that is, the highest, clearest, purest, original source of consciousness provide to you, instill within you, and awaken from within you. 
creator's truth, creator's point of view, and creator's perspective, understanding, and definition of service, and make your truth, your point of view, and your perspective, understanding, and definition one and the same as creators as it relates to the topic area of service. If you're willing, give your consent now. I'll get out of the way. Long, slow, deep breath and just notice. <laughs> the fast one. So I, I get a joy tap. So you just notice. Now if you're willing to, you're going to notice already you can feel, for, especially for the sensitives in the room, you feel a slight energetic shift. It's a little more peaceful. Do you notice that? Yeah? Anyone not notice it? Oh, that's good. Everybody noticed. Just from a simple relaxation and receiving, you've just got an aspect of source. That frequency reattunes you and it's more peaceful. Can we all agree? Slightly more peaceful? Feels a little more relaxing? Yes, you put your body into a state of neutrality through the breath, but that helped you to become vibrationally resonant with this source consciousness that basically what meets you where you're at. Make sense? Now, every time we do that kind of thing, we're becoming more and more vibrationally compatible with this source. Our perspective starts changing. Here's the thing. In this now moment, you might not suddenly be yelling like, oh, I totally get it, service in a new way. Maybe not in this moment, but I guarantee you. Okay, I can't really guarantee because I don't have control over your experience, but I know how this works. And almost always, over and over again, you get this a download like this, for example, and in the next day, or the next two days, or the next three days, your perspective on that changes. You're like, you know, I really, yeah, feel differently, think differently. And what that does is, it's now changed your whole resonance. So now you go out in the world, somebody asks you to be of service, for example, and you think to yourself, hmm, you know, that feels painful to me. That doesn't feel exciting to me. That's not my idea of service anymore. Because service is harm to none, and that includes me, you. And that thing right there, that's not my idea of service anymore. My idea of service is something that's going to feel good to everyone. And that I'll do. But this, no. Now, if you happen to have guilt attached to it, maybe, you might feel some guilt. Then you come back and you go, okay, Soros, what is it about the guilt? Let's clear that out. Make sense? Is that helpful? Okay.